George said, I got to cancel. I can't train. This is, this is a crisis. This is one of the biggest UFCs of the year. It's Madison Square Garden. He's the headline. I was worried that it was like cancer or something because it had blood. It was a disaster. It was probably the worst camp I've ever been involved in. I said, if George isn't training by Monday, we're going to pull the plug. This guy, when I was young, he was beating me up in the bus all the time. I had like Adidas spence that you can tie it like this. It was like <laughs> taken off. So I was like an underwear in front of everybody, in front of the girl. He was stronger than me. He was like three, four years older than me. And he was tall and strong guy. He's a hockey player back in the day. And yeah, we, I couldn't beat him. He was not the only guy that was beating me up. But he was kind of the, the guy that was all the girl liked. And he was like the taller, stronger guy. So he was kind of the alpha guy at the time. Instead of focusing on what the teacher was explaining in front of the class, I had to focus on how I'm going to get my books from my locker, reach the bus before the kids wait for me, the older kids. Not only beat me up, it was very pa painful mentally for me because it was humiliating me. It was like, because the, the cool guy were sitting in the back and the, yeah. the guy were not that cool were in the front. I was in the front, he was in the back. So when he was shouting stuff at me, everybody could hear and I was on the spot. It was very humiliating and something was hurting me. In an attempt to be able to stand up for himself against the bullies, George started to learn karate. I wanted to kill him. He to, like man, he made my my school time t miserable, man. I was humiliated all the time. I was getting beat up, and I had, I was very proud person. So I used to to go fight him all the time. And at one point, I fought him so many times. He said, "Oh, this guy is completely insane." I stopped bothering him because I was was never going giving up. I grew up with a lot of anger, <laughs> and uh, there were two person I was afraid growing up. It was my dad. My dad was very severe, very strict with me. And I'm glad he was because I, I, I could have become very bad. I could have chosen an, a different path. There's darkness somewhere in there. Yes, there are a lot. And a lot of my friends have chosen that, that path. And unfortunately, yeah. you know, they, 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 are, they, they, are, uh, they are not with me today. But we didn't have a lot of money, but it doesn't mean if I'm born in a nice country that always nice thing happen. It's important to face adversity. It helps if you face it at a very young age because it molds you. Almost all, like truly exceptional and mentally strong people, go through hell. It's it's very few that put themselves through hell when life is great. George eventually became a black belt in karate and started practicing Brazilian jiu-jitsu as well. I remember when I was a teenager. I didn't know what that really I wanted to do in life. So I told myself, I said, I'm going to work for like a, a year to gain money. And uh, when I get the money, I'm going to go to university and I'm still training in the meantime. Monday to Thursday, I was working for a company, Garbage Man. And during the weekend, I was working in a security of nightclub. I saw Hoyce Grace is winning the first tournament in the UFC and it really inspired me. And I told my friend at the time, I said, I'm gonna be champion in mixed martial arts in UFC and they all start laughing. You're not tough enough, you're not strong enough, this and that. When you have a dream and you believe in it, you have to, to work for it and I think yeah, there is nothing impossible in life. I was looking at myself in the mirror and I did not like what I was seeing, but I fall in love with who I could become. By the age of 23, George had joined the UFC. There was a guy, his name was Pete Spratt. He was a, a fighter, a very good striker. My manager at the time, brought Pete Spratt to fight me in TKO. And Pete Spratt didn't know who I was. I wasn't nobody at the time. And, and he probably thought that he was coming to collect an easy paycheck. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner by unanimous decision. George Rush St. Pierre! That was my, my ticket for the UFC. When you win a fight, it's just incredible. There is no pleasure without pain. He then got a shot at the title against Matt Hughes. Everybody wants my belt, you know. I, I tell George St. Pierre, just to get in line. Win or lose, I will shake his hand. And I want to I wanna have the belt. And the guard is open. Matt is so powerful. Matt's eye looks to be bloodied up just a little bit. The right eye. Oh, oh, spinning back kick into the midsection hurt. of Matt Hughes. Matt Hughes, look at 
First time I lost, it was against Matt Hughes. Yeah. I was fighting my my idol at the time. I was a, an up and comer, and um, it was my third fight in the UFC. And I was fighting this legend, Matt Hughes. It was like for me, to my eyes, if you look at the stare downs against Matt Hughes in the beginning, beginning you weren't even of the looking fight, at him, right? You were I could not up. even yeah. look at him in the eyes. I was looking up. I was like, man, it's it's impossible. I didn't even believe I could beat him. Fire. It can help you cook your food, it could be a good thing, but it, could, it can also burn you. So fear could be a good thing, it can elevate you, make you more sharp. Reaction time, your decision making time, you'll be on the edge, you'll be faster. However, it could also make you crumble under the pressure. Yeah. And it's after the fight I realized, I was like, man, I could have beat him. And it taught me something. I should never put nobody on a pedestal. Everybody's a human being. We all need to drink, eat, go to the bathroom. We're all the same. Only make a mistake once, never twice. You need to learn how to control your fear. Every fight is bigger than the last one, so you're more afraid. It doesn't mean you're not confident. Two different things. Confidence comes from how you prepare yourself. So dynamic, this guy. So many different tools. And so much stronger mentally than he was when they first met. Shot. His title was soon taken away from him by a man called Matt Sarah, who should have been an easier opponent for GSP. And then I became a little bit overconfident. I start to believe the hype of people. When they look at me, they were like, oh, he's the new up and coming superstar. And then when I became champion, I, I lost to Matt Sarah. My first failure was because I had a lack of confidence and my second failure because I was overconfident. To have a, a perfect balance of confidence and fear, to me, that's what mentally gave me the edge to become successful in my sport. This loss was a crucial part of George's development as a fighter. He started to learn the importance of fear and how it was a necessary part of winning a fight. You're honest about your own vulnerabilities, which I've always found fascinating. There's a lot of people who never admit that. I think it makes you stronger to admit that you're scared, because you're not scared to say that you're scared. And it's almost like when you don't admit you're scared, it's like you're, pre you're protecting yourself from evolving. Because the only way you can ever be realistic about a situation and get better at anything in life is you've got to accurately address what's happening. I would be more afraid of a guy that says, I'm afraid, but you know what, I'm going to still do it and I don't care if I'm afraid. There's no courage without fear. After the loss against Matt Serra, he started training with arguably the two best coaches in the world, Faraz Sahabi and John Danaher, both incredible martial artists and students of philosophy, not only improving GSP's fighting ability, but also his mind. Winners see a bad situation as temporary. That's it. No matter how down and out you are, it's temporary. People are reactive. If you tell me, hey, uh, I think you're the worst coach in the world, and I have this emotional feeling, and I have to manage these horrible feelings, I'm reacting to the world around me. I lose my business. Oh, now I'm reacting to the world around me. A proactive person, when he loses something, he's going to find something better. John Denar and Ferraz, I'm undefeated with these, with these two guys. Oh, I need them when I fight. That's some serious knowledge between yes. those two men. And they mix together is crazy. And in George's next fight, he won the title back, marking the start of his reign of dominance. To be good at something, you need to become obsessed. George St. Pierre is the greatest ever. And I still remember how strong that son of a bitch was. I mean, I'm talking about a weird strength. The fact that it is hard, the fact that it is difficult, the fact that it is one obstacle after the other is in fact the opportunity for greatness. In 265 days, there's two days that I hate the most. It's the day that I'm fighting. It's freaking unbearable. Listen everyone, it was a lot of talk uh, about what's going to happen. I have, a, I have a bunch of stuff in my life happening. I need to 
Dwayne up my gloves for a little bit. Are you retiring right now? Is that what you're saying? I was afraid to talk about it because I was, I was, I thought that people will not respect me and will laugh at me. I was going through a depression and people will be like, oh, he's, what he has to complain of, he's, he's, he's rich, he's popular, he's the champion. But I felt like I had too much on my shoulder and I felt claustrophobic. The increasing prevalence of performance enhancing drugs in the sport also contributed to his leave an issue which at the time the UFC had no intention of dealing with. The outcome of the fight could have a profound effect on your well-being. You know, you might die. George had sliced through the welterweight division, leaving with a 12-fight win streak. My opinion on that time, he was like first in UFC. George St. Pierre, is, he's a special guy. He put MMA on next level. George St. Pierre doesn't have that I want to be a world champion attitude anymore. Yeah. He doesn't have that drive and that desire that he once had. And if you don't have that, no, you should not fight. That fight's definitely not going to happen. And I just don't think, I don't think GSP ever returns. He lost that fire a long time ago. When you said never going to come back, I'm uh, like, it excite me. You know? <laughs> when you say I, I cannot do that, it's never been done before. That's mean if I do it, it will be the first time that excite me. Yeah. That really turned me on. As, there's a lot of things that turn me on in life. is is women, dinosaurs, and this. After a four-year leave from the UFC, George made his return, scheduling a fight with the middleweight champion, Michael Bisping. So I had a group of some of the best submission peoples in the world for George to work with. So his submission started getting better. Suddenly, George St. Pierre, if you got on your back, it's a problem. And I could run off some names of people he submitted in the gym that would shock you. Like, well-known jiu-jitsu people. George always had good in-out movement. He always had, like, that karate movement, the, um, the ability. He always had a, a strong jab. But now he's teaching him how to sit on a punch. Suddenly, George had a left hook. That's a dangerous man. People are getting hurt. Sacrifice yourself. Yeah, you have to go through hell sometimes, but yeah, you have to see the light at the end of it. There's purity in physical pursuits because it doesn't matter what your social status is, it doesn't matter how people perceive you. When it comes down to how long can you stay in that pool, when it comes down to how far can you run, right. when it comes down to how much can you push yourself past the part where you want to quit, right. how far can you keep going? Who are you right now? George had said. I'm better, I'm a better martial artist than I was before. And he looked better. Skill-wise, he looked phenomenal. I mean, his, his striking looked incredibly smooth. So I was in Finland and communicating with George and he's like, feeling good, let's get, the moment I get back, I'm just gonna get on a plane from Finland to Montreal and start the camp. Now, this is a six week fight camp. It's a very short camp. Back in the day, we used to do eight to 12 weeks, but George thought a shorter camp would be better. He, as he's getting older, he wanted a shorter camp. First two weeks were okay. When I first went up, George said, I've got to cancel. I've got stomach issues. I was like, what do you mean, stomach issues? What does that even mean? Uh, I can't train. I'm like, the fight's four weeks away. And George took two weeks off. I said, if George isn't training by Monday, we're gonna pull the plug. It occurred at the worst possible time. It, it wasn't at the start of the camp, it was in the middle of the camp. So the, the first two weeks were lost, then there's two weeks left. The camp itself, I really? probably the worst camp I've ever been involved in. Extreme stomach pain, an inability to eat that screwed up his entire diet and got progressively worse. This is, this is a crisis. This is one of the biggest UFCs of the year. It's Madison Square Garden, he's the headline. The UFC had to pull some big things to get this fight to happen. We pull out now, it's gonna look like a disaster. It's gonna let George let the UFC down. I got diagnosed with ulcer colitis. That's probably the mix of the stress and also the, the fact that I was constantly eating. I, I remember many times I was having breakfast, but I was oh. like chew, chewing up. Cause you were just eating too much food. Yeah, but I, but I had to because I needed to keep myself in a certain weight. Symptoms including rectal bleeding, bloody diarrhea, abdominal cramps, and pain can last for years or be lifelong. Coming back is it? It's a hard, hard it's a tricky, process. tricky thing. Yeah, and on many levels too, not just physical but also psychological. You always had one mistake to lose everything. Every fight that I took, I was scared. So admitting you're afraid is like, so what, bitch? To his everlasting credit, George said, "I'll be back on Monday and I'll be better." We went up and. He dug in deep, what can I tell you? He's a trooper. He trained every day those last two weeks and as each day went by, there was significant improvement and I remember there was a distinct moment about five days before the end of the camp, I saw him do a shoot box workout and he looked like the old George. 
And I was like, okay, I believe in this kid again. He can do it. This is the, the kind of person George St. Pierre is. The morning of the fight, George comes down for breakfast. He's weighed in and he quietly excused himself and went to the bathroom. Everyone else went away to do their things and I sat there and I realized he's in the bathroom for an hour. He came out I was like, George, you okay? And he looked at me and said, I'm fine. But I knew he wasn't. And he was afraid to tell me because he would worry that if I cornered him and I thought he was compromised, I wouldn't corner him the way I normally would, that I would doubt him. So he kept it all inside, didn't say a word. Now we're rock and roll. what makes him a champion yeah. it's one of the things it's in it's less than perfect conditions he could still rise to the occasion yeah. he beat everyone he ever uh, faced he had two losses that were Matt Hughes and Matt Sarah and came back and destroyed them in mm -hmm. the rematches you said that there's a difference between a fighter and a martial artist I do not train because I have a fight I will always train I do not like to fight but I love the science of it and I will always do it as long as I can do it a few years ago, I, I drove my car on, on the street in Montreal. It's like in, in the evening. I see a tall guy coming at me, and he asked for, he begged for money. Put down my window. This guy, I swear it's, it's true story, is the guy that used to bully me in school. I said, hey, wait a second. I parked my car. Go talk to him. He said, what the hell are you doing here, man? He's like, and, and he thought I would be angry because when he see me, he saw his reaction, like, like, shoot, like, now I'm world champion, you know, right. like, I, I can beat, uh, beat him up, you know. Right. I get out of my car, he don't know, he don't know if he should run or not. So I go to him, I say, say, what you do here, man? He's like, he's like, you, you, he's like, yeah, I know, but things doesn't go well for me, you know. I give him what I have left on me, you know, like, I don't remember, like, like a hundred something, you know. I say, get out of here, man. It's like, you're full of potential. When I was young, when I wanted to be like you, you're a tall guy, man, you're good looking. It's like, full of potential. So I shake his eyes, like, no, no problem. And then he say, thank you, George. And then I don't, I don't hear about him. Few weeks, few months later, I go to my parents' house for having uh, dinner. Then my dad say, hey, you know who come to the house a few days ago? This guy, he, he came to thank you. He came, he wanted to talk to you, but I said, you don't live here and I didn't want to give you a number. But he said, he changed my life. Now I have a job and I, and I feel good. I just want to say thank you. And it, it feels so good, kind of a relief now. 